Thank you, Frank, and uh, uh, welcome to the uh, CXL Forum in uh, Europe. Um, you know, first I'm going to give a couple slides before I invite Antonio and Olivier to join me here. Um, the data has been growing uh, very fast, and much of it is led by AI and HPC. Um, as you see here, uh, with the EDA data, uh, with the uh, bio, um, bioscience, genomics data, with AI model data, they have been growing exponentially. And not only the size is growing, but the speed that need to be processed is also growing. As a consequence, memory has been growing. Um, for those of you who have been buying computers or buying servers, you will notice the memory is becoming a bigger and bigger percentage of the server cost. In fact, it's the most expensive part of a server. More than 50% of the server cost is being spent on memory. That means more and more memory is being bought and being deployed, and people just cannot get enough of it. And it needs a new architecture to allow more memory to be deployed more efficiently and to be used by these uh, data-intensive applications. And that's the fundamental driver for CXL, or Compute uh, Express Link. Uh, this is a standard that has been developed over the last few years. Uh, there is a CXL consortium that consists of more than 200 companies that put together the standards uh, with the first version published in 2019 and the version 3.0 just published less than a year ago in 2022. And we have been organizing uh, CXL Forum uh, since August 2022 as well, with three of them took place already at the Flash Memory Summit, um, at the OCV Summit, and in Wall Street. Um, and this is the first one in Europe. Um, and um, uh, Europe has a lot of innovation uh, happening um, in HPC. Um, in fact, we were talking to uh, some people on the floor. Uh, we think there are actually more innovation in the HPC area happening in Europe more than any other places in the world. So it's great to be here and to be joined by the uh, like-minded people. Um, CXL Forum is really for the people who are interested in CXL to come together, to form this community, to exchange ideas, to network, and to collaborate so that we can bring these standards uh, to the world, both in hardware, in software, and in the overall solution that would work. So at this point, maybe let me first invite Olivier to say a few words. Uh, he is from uh, CIPO, who Cypro, uh, uh, stands for Silicon Pearl, uh, who are making uh, the processor for HPC in Europe. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm uh, Olivier Desprez, so I am a principal software architect at, uh, at Cyper. So Cyper is a uh, European uh, in its DNA, as I said. And uh, actually, uh, we are deeply involved into a European uh, project, project related to, uh, to HPC. And what we see is that, uh, as European, we like to, uh, to bet on, uh, on standard. And we see uh, CXL as a standard, not only for uh, uh, disaggregation of memory, so that's the first wave, to, to take your, your message, uh, uh, Frank, but uh, also on the, the cash currency. That's really uh, key for us because we, we are trying to build some uh, very efficient uh, supercomputers. And uh, so Europe is currently uh, taking uh, CXL, not only for uh, uh, for memory, but also for, uh, for cash currency. And that's uh, very important. So I, I will go into more detail during my presentation. But uh, yeah, that's the message. Europe is really uh, focusing on taking CXL at the moment. And, uh, and hopefully, uh, it will be a success. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and we not only have uh, innovators like uh, Olivier, who is uh, you know, a startup building this chip, uh, they are growing really quickly. I, I was talking, they have a hundred some people, they're gonna double by the end of the year, they're gonna grow to a thousand in a couple of years. And hopefully it will be a new uh, innovation happen there. But there are also a lot of uh, practitioners and users who are pushing the boundaries in HPC. I uh, have here with, uh, with us is Antonio from Barcelona Supercomputing Center. He's one of the uh, earliest adopters to a lot of the cutting edge technologies, and he has been looking to CXL as well. Antonio. Thank you, and uh, yeah, I'd like to thank the organization for letting me uh, talk today. 
would glad to what Olivier said because we are, we are also partners with many of the, those projects at, at Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Um, several of us uh, researching in different areas of uh, supercomputing at the BSC. We are actually looking into different ways to, to leverage this. We are looking forward to get our hands on on on, on CXL technology. Uh, I, I agree it's certainly going to play an important role in the upcoming uh, computers in, in Europe. As I said, in many projects were already uh, looking into, into this technology to, to be integrated and leveraged to not only memory, but also to interconnect other devices. And uh, yeah, just to, to conclude, I will be um, talking about uh, two of my use cases where I'm really much looking forward to, to get my hands on, on CXL technology and to, to, to explore amazing things that we can Enable with that. Thank you, right. Olivier, and thank you, Antonio. Um, yeah, so uh, since the first time we did this at CXL Forum, it has become uh, more real. Um, you know, first it was just slides, um, but today I think you will see from um, various uh, uh, companies. Uh, actually real hardware and real software that works. You'll see demos, you'll see uh, actual uh, proof of concepts uh, showing both memory expansion, memory pooling, and memory sharing actually working in action. So it is becoming real. <clears throat> but before going to those demos, let me first just give you a, a refresher on what CXL is, hopefully in the next five minutes. And then I'm gonna give you a preview of some of those demos that you will see. Um, so CXL started with version one. And what version one does is basically an extension of your memory, where it uh, specifies uh, the CXL.io, CXL.cache, cache, CXL.mem, where you can extend memory uh, over this protocol on top of PCIe generation five and later. And then CXL 2.0, extending that extension to pooling, which allows multiple hosts or multiple servers, in here indicated by H1 through H4, connecting to the same memory pool. And this memory pool could consist of uh, single logical devices or multiple logical devices. They can be in the form of a multi-port device or multi-port card, or they can be in the form of multiple devices interconnected over a switch, a CXL switch, to these hosts. And all these topologies will be supported. Actually, you will see some of them today, both at this show, as well as on the expo floor in the uh, uh, Manverge booth. Um, and then CXL 3.0 is the latest specification that was published in August of 2022, and that extended the 2.0 specification to allow more than a single switch to be used. So you could have a uh, cascading of switches that allow the scalability to increase beyond just four or eight hosts, where you can go to tens or hundreds or even thousands of servers connecting to the same pool of uh, memory. It also uh, enabled uh, you know, pure peer-to-peer -peer access. That means any processors, whether it is CPU, whether it's GPU, whether it's accelerators, can access any memory without going through the main CPU. So it can be uh, just directly peer-to-peer -peer access for more efficiency. It also specifies cache coherency that's needed to allow uh, memory sharing, uh, allow multiple hosts to access the same memory region at the same time without creating inconsistency of data. Um, and this is uh, essentially a series of important specifications that mapped out the roadmap that this will become available. And when you're talking about memory, people ask about performance, both bandwidth and latency. How does CXL memory will look compared to the DDR memory that we are used to in the computer today? And here are the specification of the various PCIe generations and number of the lanes that your device will support and what are the bandwidths that it's gonna support. Uh, CXL runs on PCIe generation five or later, so it's gonna be on Gen, Gen 5 today, and it's gonna be on Gen 6 in the near future. And depending on the type of devices, you will see with Gen 5, if you have a four lane, it will have uh, 32 gigabytes combining both ways uh, of bandwidth 
going to your uh, memory, uh, CXL memory device. If you have eight lanes, you can go to 64 gigabytes. And this is on par or similar to what you're gonna get from your DDR devices. And you can certainly have more than one of them uh, together to further increase the bandwidths. In terms of latency, it is similar to a memory that's connected to a CPU that's a one NUMA hop away. So in our measurement, it's somewhere between 200 to 300 nanoseconds latency when you need to access a CXL memory, uh, which is slower than accessing the local DDR DRAM connecting to the same CPU, which is typically around 100 nanosecond, but similar as accessing the CPU uh, that's uh, one hop away on Numa. So it is not quite exactly as fast as DDR, but it's very close, and you can essentially run your application pretty effectively on the, on the CXL memory. And I discussed the timeline where it is becoming real. And here gives kind of a high level um, a prediction or forecast of when we're gonna see some of the hardware hitting the markets. Um, the top three rows is indicating on the computing side, on the CPU and GPU, the processor unit side, that we are seeing the first processors from Intel, from AMD, and from ARM or supporting CXL, uh, or starting to supporting CXL protocols, where, um, where Intel is supporting CXL 1.1 type two devices, AMD supporting uh, CXL 1.1 type three devices, and ARM is actually the most ahead supporting CXL 2.0 devices. In the next uh, version of, this, uh, of the CPU, they're gonna have uh, expanded their support. Both Intel and AMD will have support for 1.1 for all devices. AMD will starting to support 2.0 um, in all devices, and the ARM will continue to advance uh, as well. Um, on the uh, memory device side, um, that we are seeing more and more uh, samples, uh, engineering samples that are available from the leading memory vendors, and they are here supporting um, uh, the uh, uh, memory expansion use cases. But as you will see, we are also seeing the first uh, development samples that are supporting the pooling and the sharing use cases. In fact, one of the most exciting news out of this event is that we think we can uh, develop software innovations to bring in the timeline of some of the key features. You know, for example, memory sharing is really the holy grail. A lot of people have been wanting to see memory sharing for a long time, and it's not available in the specification until 3.0 timeframe. But through the software innovation, we think we can bring in the memory sharing timeline to the 2.0 timeframe. So that uh, you know, through cache coherency implemented in software, for certain semantics, we can allow certain applications to start enjoying uh, accessing to the same region of memory at the same time with the right cache coherence building, and we're gonna go or into it in the first session in the afternoon. Uh, so the timeline is getting close. We are seeing some of the development system uh, starting to occur this year. We think we can get the first system to the customers by the end of the year for them to uh, test out, and the real production deployment can start next year for uh, expansion, pooling, and some subsets of sharing use cases. And the, uh, the impact to the industry is going to be huge. Um, and this is um, essentially going to make it possible for memory resources to be disaggregated and pooled like the other resources in the data center. You know, storage um, the disaggregation happened more than 30 years ago when uh, fiber channel came to the market, the storage can be disaggregated out of the computer and creating their own pool. And the technologies like SAN and NAS come to market. And there's creation of new use cases, creation of new technologies, both in hardware and software. There are various data services being implemented. And a new industry is born, and that is network storage. And this industry is over $100 billion in size, and that's impacting every data center in the world. 
and memory until now has been a subset of a server. It's a very expensive subset. It's more than 50% of the cost, but it's still tied down to the server. It cannot be disaggregated. It cannot be a resource that, can, uh, that you can scale independently and you can manage independently. And all that's gonna change with the Excel. You know, with the Excel, the memory can be liberated from the server enclosure and to become its own first class citizen in a data center. It can be independently pooled, independently scaled, inter independently managed. It can be dynamically allocated to servers as needed, and it can be used as a way for the data to be shared between servers at very high performance, very high bandwidth, and very low latency. We think this is going to lay the groundwork for a whole set of innovations in software both in the applications as well as in the, the, in the platforms that allow this to happen and a new industry gonna born because of it as well. And I'm, I'm gonna give some examples and this relates to the work that Manverge and many other companies are doing in collaboration to bring these innovations to the market. Um, the first is in the area of composability. You know, uh, composable infrastructure has been a hot topic in the last few years. And it's been lar um, largely revolving around composable storage, composable networking, composable GPUs, but not so much in composable memory because of the tightness it's being coupled to the, uh, to the processors. But C CXL can then enable that decouplement and that composability to happen. Um, you know, today, uh, while the other stuff could be shared among the servers, DRAM are within each server. But what's emerging with CXL, that we could have a pool of memory that's indicated by the red boxes uh, that can be shared across the servers. And it's gonna start at a rack scale where all the servers on the same rack can be connected to that pool of device, either through multi-port devices or some, some kind of topology or through a switch, uh, switch that can interconnect them all. And we are seeing the first innovators, both of the multi-port CXL devices and of the uh, switch uh, uh, devices. And we're gonna hear from some of them today, uh, such as uh, XCOM, uh, who's gonna present. And then in the future, uh, we're gonna see this to expand to a data center scale, where more than one racks could be interconnected between those switches and any of the servers could potentially access to any of the, uh, the memories um, across the data center. And this will be further enabled by people who are working on photonics technologies, which have a different kind of wire that can go to 50 to 100 meters to allow servers to talk to a memory that's a distance away. Um, and this is gonna enable additional use cases uh, that are not uh, possible today. Um, and then the first, uh, you know, very interesting solution that we are building with um, our partners is a, um, a service uh, we call the Elastic uh, Memory Service. And, um, and uh, you, you may also hear about it as Project Endless Memory. And the fundamental objective of this project is to eliminate the other memory errors. You know, for, for those of us who work with computing, with HPC in particular, but any computing, uh, other memory or OOM error is one of the most common errors that we see. And it can cause uh, crashes sometimes if your application doesn't handle it well. And at the very least, it can slow your application down by a couple order of magnitude. It basically falls through a cliff once you run out of memory. And that's a very severe bottleneck for many of the applications. And CXL enables a solution that we can basically create uh, endless memory, where uh, it is achieved by having a common memory pool connected to uh, multiple hosts. And you could have various applications running on the hosts. It could be uh, in the various virtual machines, could be in different containers, it could be running bare metal on that machine. And the memory demand for those applications could change over time. In steady state, there might be enough memory just in the local memory to handle those um, uh, applications. And once the demand of those applications increase in memory, uh, you run into those OOM situations. But with memory pooling that, and with the right software being written, 
that we can detect uh, before it runs out of memory. We'll set a threshold. It's getting close to running out of memory, so we would dynamically and automatically allocate more memory add to that node so that there's enough memory that it doesn't run out. And when the demand decreases, we can also detect it. There could be another threshold being, so, uh, being set that we can return the memory to the pool. So it's a dynamic process to manage the memory capacities so that any of the hosts never run out of memory as long as there are enough memory totally for this cluster. And this solution essentially could eliminate the OOM issues if there are overall enough memory resource for all of the hosts. And um, <laughs> so we are in Germany, so it's like uh, we drink a lot of beer here, and it's like having bottomless beer where it never run out. <laughs> you know, if you're getting empty, then you, there'll be more refill. And similarly with memory, uh, it, with this EMS service, it never ran out. When you're getting low in, in free memory, you'll get more. Uh, so that's a bottomless um, uh, memory case. And the benefits is uh, self-evident. It can uh, really um, have more efficient uh, use of your resources. Uh, you know, there's always uh, that effect when you have pooling happen. It can decrease downtime um, by reducing those crashes. It can increase performance and it can optimize uh, overall for your uh, for your infrastructure. And and we are living in a time where um, sustainability is becoming increasingly important. And it does have a major impact uh, by more efficient of usage through pooling to the environment as well. Um, that you can uh, use this memory to have more efficient use of resources. You could uh, essentially potentially you know, power off things when they are not used and power on when they are being used. And we can always right size uh, the amount of resources that's needed. Uh, and by doing this, we can reduce the carbon footprint and, uh, and optimize on the energy usage uh, for, the, for the data center. And to enable endless memory, hardware is a foundation, but software is a necessity. That we need to build the right software component to enable the auto monitoring and detection of the memory usage on each of the hosts. And we need to have a module that we call Composer that talks to each of the uh, software we call memory machine on each of the hosts and can manage this dynamic allocation and deallocation intelligently. Uh, there could be advanced algorithms that we can predict such usage and creating more intelligent um, uh, memory pooling solution uh, through this all as well. And, and Memverge is working on this layer of software with our hardware partners to enable this intelligent and automatic balancing of memory resources across the pool. And you will hear more about it uh, from Greg uh, right after this, and, and he will also show you a real, a real demo on this as well. So with endless memory, what we hope is that we will no longer see the OOM errors anymore. All right, so that's, uh, so that's very exciting. Um, but I do have another thing uh, uh, to share, uh, the second thing, uh, and that is uh, uh, shared memory. Uh, so, um, uh, so as you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, besides OOM is a big problem, with any distributed applications, um, whenever it needs to go to I.O., when, whenever it needs to go on a network to, to talk to a node next door, or whenever it needs to go to storage to persist something on uh, SSD, the application becomes slower. Uh, that's why people buy a lot of memory so that they can keep things in memory, it doesn't go into I.O. Um, but if you are distributed, you have to talk to the other node, and you have to share some data with the other node, and there's no way going around I.O. So we kind of stuck, and that's a, a major I.O. bottleneck, people call it I.O. wall. And with CXL, for the first time, we are seeing actually an alternative for nodes to communicate with each other. And this alternative is through shared memory. Um, and so, uh, you know, for the first time, node A and node B could uh, talk to each other, not over network, by, but by talking to the same shared memory. And this is possible today by multiple processes on the same host using shared memory as IPC, as inter-process communication, but it's not possible across nodes. But because of CXL, it is possible. And uh, on the hardware specification, it's going to be possible by the 3.0 timeframe, which is at least two or three years away uh, before we see the first hardware. 
but through software implementation, we can demonstrate it on, uh, on 2.0. And, and this is one of the, uh, the demos uh, that you'll see this afternoon. It's show, seeing that uh, CXL memory works actually on hardware samples that are available today. So the way we are doing it is through a project we call uh, Project Gizmo. Um, and Gizmo, um, for those who, of you who watch movies, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice um, uh, uh, spirit uh, before it turns into gremlins. Uh, and it's also you know, a nice tool. But in this case, uh, it stands for G-I-S-M-O. It's a global I.O. free uh, shared memory object. Uh, it's essentially an in-memory object store that uh, runs across multiple nodes. And it allows multiple, uh, applica uh, one application on multiple nodes to access the same memory and to be able to using that memory to communicate and to share data across each other. And this, we believe, is the most efficient way data can be shared across uh, multiple nodes. And we have been working with uh, uh, multiple um, uh, applications, including AI, including databases, to validate that this is useful for them. Uh, this is a very simple API. This allows the creation, allows the read, and allows uh, the, the destruction of these objects. But even such simple APIs can already be very useful. Uh, for those applications. And, and this afternoon, we're going to go into uh, the full details of it. We think because of this um, shared memory architecture, now memory becomes your network. And now memory becomes your new storage. And, and this is the promise of this new memory-centric computing model that's enabled by CXL and where I.O. Uh, can be eliminated for many of the use cases as well. And so this afternoon, uh, we are, I think this is the first session in the afternoon where we're gonna go into details on these use cases and we're gonna see a real demo of uh, Gizmo at work. So, so that's it, that's the introduction. And uh, you know, just repeat what Frank said, CXL is really, it's not a meeting, it's a community. So please scan and join, and hopefully we will share information, we'll collaborate or as part of this community. Uh, thank you for being here. And now let me uh, introduce uh, Greg, uh, who is uh, our uh, lead engineer, who's been working on Project Endless Memory, and he's gonna tell you all about it.